Chapter 10, The Salt March I present a weapon not of the weak, but of the brave. Gandhi grew up in a city right near the ocean. When he was a young man, he had the chance of traveling on ocean liners across the vast waters of our planet to discover that all human beings are one family. One time, during the Indian freedom struggle, Gandhi came up with a way to show the Indian people that they were free from the British even before the British took leave of India. Gandhi and his friends had been practicing nonviolence with all their heart day and night. The idea was to reclaim the salt of India using nonviolence. The British took India's salt and sold it back to them, just as they did with cloth. Gandhi and his friends wanted to show that they would no longer let the British steal their resources. They walked from their community all the way to the sea, almost 240 miles away, where they could gather their own salt. As they walked, they sang songs, spun khadi, repeated their mantras, and kept their spirits cheerful. Since they were not allowed to gather salt, they were committing what is known as civil disobedience, or non-cooperation against an unfair law. When they arrived at the shores near the town of Dandi, they were now a group of thousands. Gandhi stepped forward and grabbed a handful of salt and sand. He raised it for everyone to see, and people cheered and sang. They began to pick up salt themselves to sell. The British jailed thousands of people for this act of civil disobedience. The world was watching had never seen anything like it before. The Satyagrahis, or those following nonviolent resistance, did not use any violence, while the British forces did because they did not know about nonviolence. After a while, the Satyagrahis turned their attention to the Darsana Salt Works, a kind of factory where the salt from the ocean was turned into salt for people to eat. The British refused to let them in and tried to drive them away with their sticks. The Satyagrahis were getting badly hurt, but they would not go home, nor would they hit back. On this day, the people of India knew they would soon be independent from British rule, because it was their non-violence that made them free. It would take 17 more years of non-violence before the British would let India rule itself. Nonviolence and patience go hand in hand.